Building a solid camera kit for landscape photography shouldn't be difficult, which is why I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in this video. So let's jump right in. What's up y'all, so Project Photography back with another video and today people, today, before we get started, make sure to follow all of my socials, including a new TikTok, where I'm gonna be posting all of my short form content and so forth, so make sure to check it out. But today I wanna run through all the camera gear required in order to build out a really strong kit for landscape photography. And along the way, I'm gonna give you some recommendations as well as what you should look out for in each of these pieces of camera gear. So with that being said, we are gonna need a camera body, wide angle lens, telephoto lens, ND filters, tripod, as well as a camera bag. So let's first start off with the camera body. And to me, this is probably the least important out of all of them, and you would think it's more important, but to be honest with you, there are very few requirements that we need in order to have a really good camera body for landscape photography. First of all, we are going to need a tilting screen. If we have a three-way articulating screen, that will absolutely be ideal. We need at least 24 megapixels. Of course, more megapixels, the better. We're going to need good dynamic range, good image quality over Overall, so we're gonna want nice colors, very sharp images, and very editable files. And the last thing, it has to be lightweight and compact. Now, it's not a long list of requirements, but it's definitely really important that you hit these criteria when looking for a good camera body. Of course, there are going to be other features that are not required, but are definitely very helpful, like a lower base ISO, more megapixels, better dynamic range, and other things like that would definitely make a huge difference in improving the quality of the camera body. But for the most part, if we have the above criteria, we're gonna be just fine. For me, I personally use a Nikon Z6, which can go around $800 on eBay used. But if you wanted something cheaper, that is also full frame, the Nikon Z750 would actually be incredibly useful for what you need. It has 24 megapixels, a two-way tilting screen, great dynamic range, and overall really good image quality, and is only $600 versus 800 for the Nikon Z6 used. So it's up to you which way you wanna go, but you can't go wrong with either one of those choices. So next, let's jump right into wide angle lenses. Now this is gonna be your most important lens that you have in your camera kit. And honestly, this is one piece of gear I would not cheap out on. And in a wide angle lens, we're gonna be using it to capture the entirety of the landscape because we're gonna have more complex elements that I have to worry about. And if we have a good wide angle lens, we can do a lot with it. So what we are looking out for in a wide angle lens is a 20 millimeters or wider, an 82 millimeters or lower filter thread. You're gonna want great image quality, a lack of vignetting. It has to be sharp corner to corner. It has to have solid colors, as well as be very lightweight, small and compact. Because when we're traveling and hiking, we wanna make sure it's nice and small so we don't take up a lot of space and we can go on more hikes. And if it has an F2.8 aperture or wider, that is absolutely a bonus. Now, I would personally recommend getting the 20 millimeter F1.8 G. You can find them for about $450 used on eBay, but for me personally, I actually have a 14 to 30 millimeter F4S, which you can probably find around $900 used on eBay. And the reason I'm recommending the 20 millimeter F1.8 G, that's for the F mount, by the way. So if you had a Nikon Z6, you will absolutely need an FTZ adapter. But the reason I'm recommending it is because that's a lens I used back in the day and it was a fantastic lens. And the price to the quality lens is fantastic. It's a really good lens. So if you were to go with a wide angle lens, and didn't want to break the bank, the 20 millimeter F1.8 G is the way to go. So the next piece of camera gear that's really important is a telephoto lens. Now having a great telephoto lens paired with a wide angle lens makes an incredibly dangerous combo for landscape photographers because a telephoto lens can help isolate one part of the landscape and help it stand out. Now in a good telephoto lens, you're gonna want at least 200 millimeters or longer. You're gonna want an 82 millimeter filter thread or lower. You're gonna want sharp images, of course, nice contrast, nice image quality, be lightweight and compact. And of course, having a really good telephoto lens is important, but that focal length is the most important part of a telephoto lens. If we can't reach out to 200 millimeters or more, it's gonna be really difficult to capture the images that we want. And for me personally, I recommend the 70 to 300 millimeter F4.5 to 5.6 VRG. Now, when you're looking at picking up this lens, you have to make sure it's the FX version for the F mount. No crop sensor lenses, just the full frame one. And this is a lens I've used for a really long time and I really loved. And good thing is only $220 used on eBay, which is incredible. And if you got that plus a 20 millimeter, you've only spent about $650 on lenses. And those are really good quality lenses. So although your telephoto lens is incredibly important, let's move on to ND filters because this is also an area that I would not cheap out on. 
a good ND filter can really make the difference between a good photo and a bad photo, a usable one and a very not usable one. Because I've had very bad ND filters in the past and let me tell you, it is not worth the money at all. And for ND filters, I'm gonna want a three, six and a 10 stop in particular. Now for you, you can vary it up. If you like the stronger ones, like a four and eight and a 12, you can go ahead and do that. But for me personally, I think a three, six and a 10 is the way to go because it just covers such a wide range of scenarios from your shorter exposures to your more longer exposures. So the main things I would look out for in a good ND filter is a lack of vignetting, lack of color cast, accurate color reproduction, has to be very sharp and good build quality. And what I would personally recommend is to get 82 millimeter filters and then buy step up rings so that you can use them on any sort of filter thread. For me, I have all my filters in 82 millimeters from B plus W and those filters are really good, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend them because A, I don't even think B plus W even makes these anymore. They are pretty old. I've heard really good things about Polar Pro. I know they have a set of ND filters that are actually pretty decent. I've heard good things about them, but B plus W does have a new set of ND filters that honestly I trust B plus W. So you have to go ahead and do your own research in terms of filters because the ones I have are just pretty outdated. And those are the only ND filters I've ever had. So the next thing is a tripod and I'm going to sound really redundant, but this is also one of those things that you don't want to cheap out on because a good tripod will last you forever. And if you don't have a decent one, it's, it's honestly a pain to shoot landscape photography. So what I would personally look out for in a good tripod is it being lightweight, compact, has a strong ball head, strong legs for support, and clamp locks are definitely preferred. Now the tripod that I have is the Peak Design Travel Tripod, and that is definitely a pricey tripod at $375, but I think it's worth it because you have the lifetime um, warranty as well as it just checks off all the boxes that you need in a really good tripod and I've been using this since 2019 and has been an absolute beast so honestly I think a tripod is something that's well worth investing in because it will last you a really long time now the last and final piece of camera gear that you need is a really good camera bag now the perfect camera bag just simply doesn't exist for landscape photography but there are definitely a few criteria that I think are important first off you have to have a hip belt you have to have low lift and you have to have comfortable shoulder straps. It has to have back access and be at least 30 liters. And on top of it, you're gonna want a camera cube to be fit in there. Now, when it comes to camera bags, this is a little bit of a difficult one. For me personally, I use the Shimoda Action X30, and that is meant for landscape photographers and hikers in particular, but it is quite pricey at $380 is the price that I bought it at. But it honestly, it has been really good. I wouldn't want any other bag. And at the moment, I can't recommend anything else. But if you want something cheaper, you can always go with a traditional hiking bag that has all those features. And most of them normally do. And then all you can do is just put a camera cube or some sort of camera ICU in there and you know have it where it's like back access and then put all your camera gear and so forth where it essentially accomplishes the same thing as something like H1 Action X30. It just won't be tailored for landscape photographers because it's just tailored towards hikers in general. But of course, there's definitely a lot of other options, but I think those are criteria that you need to look out for. And having a really good camera bag makes a difference between making those hikes bearable and unbearable and comfortable and uncomfortable. So having a really good camera bag will really just make your hiking experience a lot easier so yeah guys those are these six pieces of camera gear. i know it's a lot but honestly i feel like for landscape photography you don't really need a lot of camera gear i think if you just have those six pieces of gear you will be just fine so if you have any questions on terms of you know what you should look out for even if you you know see a piece of gear and you're not sure if that's the right thing to pick up you can always just throw it in the comments and let me know you know i can always let you guys know if i think it's a good buy or not so yeah, guys, what is your camera kit consists of right now? What would you want to add? And anyways, guys, thank you so much for experiencing the world with me today. Please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll get you guys in the next one.